Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for this hearing and bringing attention to this issue. I have a couple of questions, but before I ask the questions, I can't help but respond briefly to uh, what was said by our uh, friend and colleague, the ranking minority member, in his opening remarks with regard to the uh, adverse economic circumstances as a result of uh, the failure of oversight and regulation. And it's important to understand that uh, the failure of this oversight and regulation goes back to the first six years of the 21st century and were initiated by former Senator Graham, uh, who, curiously enough, is now the chief economic advisor for uh, Senator McCain. So I just, just wanted to get those uh, facts on the, on the record so the situation is more clearly understood. And I thank you very much for, uh, for, for being here. I, the first question I have is a local question. I have a uh, public access station back in my district in the city of Binghamton that unfortunately is not provided with the facilities and training by its cable service providers. So I'm, I'm wondering what you might think could be done so that the Federal Communications Commission will have the authority to enforce, perhaps, a federal minimum of financial support that could be provided by cable service providers uh, so that rural areas generally have the same capability for public access as do larger cities. Uh, well, Congressman, the, uh, today under the Cable Act, uh, if, a local, if a franchising authority uh, wants a cable operator to provide cable channels and facilities for those channels, it can order that. Uh, and uh, a failure to comply with the franchise would be something that could be, could be challenged. With respect to funding for services and assistance, uh, again, that's something that the local franchising authority works out with the cable operator. Uh, I'm, I think in every circumstance where they ask for it, where the local franchising authority asks for it, uh, the cable operator and the local franchising authority work, work something out. So I'm, I'm not aware of, if there isn't uh, that kind of funding in Binghamton, the Binghamton area, uh, I don't know why, whether that's a function of, of the franchise or, or whether when they negotiated the franchise they didn't think it was necessary, now it is. But I assume, I, I think Time Warner is the provider in Binghamton. It would be something that could be worked out. I'm happy to go back to Time Warner and get some more details on the situation. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I wonder if I might use your first name, Monica, Barbara, if you would m mind responding to that. Monica? Monica and Barbara, please. <laughs> oh, would you, oh. Um, I, you know, I, I would agree that you know, under, under, the, under, the cable, under the Communications Act, um, the local franchising authority has discretion as to how it wants to allocate the 5% that it collects in revenues from cable operators and their, and their customers. And so if they wanted to support those types of non-capital costs like salaries and training and the other types of operations you were talking about, they could. They could, yes, but I wonder if uh, there's anything that we could do that would enable the FCC, if the FCC might be interested, in ensuring that those kinds of things take place. Well, what you, you know, I mean, if Congress wanted to change the statute to say that capital and non-capital costs could be passed along um, above and beyond the 5 percent, and, and it would be up to Congress to do that. If Congress decided to change the balance of the 5 percent and decided, well, instead of charging cable operators and their customers 5 percent, we decided to move that up to 7 percent with the, you know, or some other number and with the requirement that some percentage be allocated to to peg, as opposed to giving local franchising um, authorities that discretion, that's something Congress could do. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate it that Monica Desai keeps going back to the statute, because I do think there are weaknesses in it. And I think that you've just pointed out one, Representative Henchy, because when small communities don't have this, it's a great loss. And what we've seen around the country is where it has developed, it has been an awesome and important local benefit. So the idea of minimums, the idea of how do you set a, a platform below which the industry cannot go, I'm all for it. I think we need protection and we need your help to make that happen. Yes, I agree. Thank you. I have one other question. Uh, the, the state of Illinois was able to bring all interests together and bring a solution to keep PEGs thriving while also allowing cable companies to negotiate statewide franchises. The uh, terms that they reached serve as a model for the FCC 
to change their regulations so both cable companies and PEGs really come out in better conditions than they were. How do you think the FCC could use the success of the state of Illinois and New York City, actually, as a model for new PEG policy for us at the federal level? Well, Congressman, I think the, uh, again, I think the balance that was struck in the, that is currently struck in the statute with respect to uh, public access channels, PEG channels, uh, is the right one, where the decisions about the number of channels and the nature of the services is really done at the local level. The, 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 the current federal law gives wide discretion to the local governments to negotiate public access channels. I'm not sure you can give them much more than that broad grant of authority to decide what they need, what they want, uh, and and uh, what kind of facilities they, they can use. Uh, uh, you get more detail than that, and in some sense, you may wind up restricting the local governments. Uh, I oops, I appreciate your comments about Illinois law. I worked on it, but I would be the first to tell you that there are big problems in state legislation that's out there. What we did in Illinois is we clung to the cliff. And we were able to reverse a train that was already moving in a wrong direction for the public. So I am proud of the fact that we were able to get what we got. But frankly, state law, the way it stands in the 19 states where it exists, goes from barely acceptable to awful. So I would prefer that, based on some of what I've heard Mr. Knobby talk about and I've seen in New York and what you all have done for the people in New York, is that that's a stronger model. Uh, local franchising still exists. You are standing up for your PEG centers. And I think that uh, Representative Kirk pointed out that you can have very well-worded and good law, and a major multi-billion dollar company is ignoring it. So we've got some problems with the models that are out there now, and I do think we managed to turn around a near disaster, but I think we can do much better, much better. I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.